Welcome back to another episode of Lost in the Farmer's Market Garden Shorts. Today's subject, and this is a subject that some of you have waited for for a while, is, as you can see there, the common fig. Now, the scientific name of the common fig is Ficus carica. Ficus means fig. No, really. That's, that's what that means. At some point, people were running around calling it ficus, and then fig came in, and, well... Someone was unimaginative. Now, carica is interesting because it derives from the word caria, which was a habitation and where the first type of agriculturally grown fig was, which is interesting. Caria, I believe, is in Old Rome or the Mycenaean Kingdom. So that tells you how far back. However, there has been fossil evidence that figs have been cultivated and eaten by humans at least as far back as the Stone Age intentionally. How about them apples? Now, what's interesting is that the figs are in the Moraceae family, which is the mulberry family, which... Okay. You would think the leaf shape that they might be related to grapes. However, this leaf shape is common in the plant kingdom and is not always an indicator of relations. It could just... it's just a fluke. That's the most efficient shape. And there are figs with even more outrageously shaped leaves. So you can't really rely on that. Now, we do know that there are at least a few hundred confirmed types of common fig with different colors, flavors, growing habits, everything. What you're looking at is magnolia. This is one of my more successful fig bushes. Now, I like this one. There's a funny story attached to it. It's one of a few. I happen to have two brown turkeys, this magnolia, a white ashia, a Chicago Hardy, a Celeste, a Black Mission, and a Kadoda. For note, the Kadoda is the one they make Big Newtons out of. As soon as I saw that at the nursery, I made that Homer Simpson gargle and I was like, oh. And then they asked me to either buy something or leave. What can I say? I'm a sucker for a good plant. Well, figs prefer USDA zones 8 to 10. However, cold tolerant types will take 6 to 7 with protection. They prefer soil pH between 6 and 6.5. The cold hardy types, for reference, are Brown Turkey, Brunswick, Celeste, Chicago Hardy, Petite Nigra, there's no correct way to pronounce that, kids, uh, Nigron, also known as Violet de Bordeaux, and I'm going to get into that in a second, and White Marseille. Now, I need to say that many figs, common varieties that we know of, have more than one common name. We've just highlighted that. Negron is another name for Violet de Bordeaux, which also has like three other names. So, investigate thoroughly when you buy things to make sure you're not buying three of the same thing by accident if you wanted three different things. But it gets more interesting. There are three types of fig, and we're going to get into that, but first I need to give you a little biology lesson. Now, what we're going to do here is you, I don't know if you can see it, there is a big juicy white fig at the bottom. And I'm going to zoom in on that, and we're going to cover it. Big biology. I promise I will never do that again. Okay, see that big yellowy one there? That one's just about ready to pick. I'm probably going to pick that after this video is over. Now, there are three types of fig, as I said. Me all the ones I have on premises, with exception of my exotic fig, which is an Afghan fig. I'll find out what that needs later. All fall under what's called the persistent type, meaning that they are parthenocarpic. That's a big word, and it's often mistaken for in spell checkers for parthenogenesis, which means something else. Parthenocarpic means they produce fruit without pollination. Parthenocarpic fruits are more common than you think. There are self... the common version of that word is self-fruitful. Now, what's interesting about figs is that's not a fruit. What you're looking at is actually a flower turned completely inside out. I know what some of you are thinking, Ew! Yeah, I know, it's, it's weird. On the inside of that fig, that juicy red jelly stuff on the inside is actually the flowers. And it has multiple flowers, and in a type called... Cauticus, what'll happen is a little tiny wasp will fly up to the opening in the bottom of the fig and crawl through 
and transfer pollen. That fig will visit a second set of figs, because, you know, the figs you see on this magnolia are all female. There are no capra figs here, which are the male figs that carry the pollen. So the wasp will crawl in there and, ah, while getting the pollen, accidentally distribute it to the female fig, which will cause the fig to ripen. Seeds will form, giving it a nuttier flavor. Some people say it's superior. I say that's BS. A fig is dang good. And that's the cycle of life. Now, inevitably, with Cauticus figs, you'll get a little bit of wasp in there, assuming the fig its fruit itself has dissolved it. <sighs> I know there's parts per million of insects in everything we eat, especially chocolate, but I don't want to think about it. Now, Cauticus types that we know about are Marabout, Incharyo, and Zidi. Persistent types are pretty much all the types I listed in my orchard, including... Oh shoot, that list is all the ones in my orchard. I cheated! Well anyway, there's another type called Intermediate, which includes Calamerna, Lampiera, King, and San Pedro. Now that type is commonly called the San Pedro type. Calamerna is the most famous of the group, and you'll see that um, Sunmade sells dried figs, and they're either blackfish or Calamerna. And that means that they are sort of Cauticus, but not quite. Meaning they sort of need a pollinator, but not quite. There's also another type called Crosset, which has edible capra figs, so that means the male figs are edible instead. I'm not experimenting with that, that just sounds weird. Now, beyond that, the largest big producers in the world are Turkey, Egypt, Morocco, and Algeria, in that order. Most of our fig production is actually in California, however, North Carolina is the great untapped climate for fig growth. We have a Mediterranean climate, we have the rainfall, figs don't give a crap about hurricanes, and I'm going to zoom out and up for a moment to show you a neat trick. If you look here, I'm going to lift the tripod. You see where the figs are on that stem? Over there, you see that? Figs produce figs. Fig bushes produce figs on new growth. Which means you can prune them at the end of the season, preferably in early September, shape them as you see fit, and they'll still produce for you, unlike other fruits which are sensitive to fruit. Here's an interesting thing I need to show you while I'm out here. Oh, there it is. There we go. Lovely. Okay. You see that? Again. See that bag? That weird looking bag? That is how you protect your figs from birds. Those are pure cotton muslin bags. They're very inexpensive. And what they do is they trick the birds into thinking there isn't fruit or that the fruit isn't ripe. Birds have no sense of smell, so they rely on eyesight. And their eyesight is very good at picking out ripe figs on the bush. And since I sell figs at the market, I can tell you that... Paired with the fact that figs do not ship well, they do not store well, and they don't last long in the fridge, I really don't need bird nips, as one of our sustainable neighbors puts it, all over my darn fruit. Now here's some more information. Cheekiness aside. Nutrition. Raw, at uh, a 100 gram serving, figs are comprised of 79% water, 19% carbohydrates, 1% protein, and have 14% of your daily fiber. Now that's pretty damn healthy. It gets better. They have the vitamins B1, B2, B3, B5, B6, B9, choline, I don't, I don't know what that is either, Vitamin C, vitamin K, calcium, iron, manganese, magnesium, phosphorus, potassium, sodium, and zinc. Pretty much everything. The only thing they don't do is make your whites whiter and um, put a skinny tie on you so you can be fabulously wham. However, they have a drawback. The milky sap that they exude when they're injured, even when you're picking figs, can cause what's called phytophotodermatitis. Dun-dun. Dun-dun-dun. 
basically what that means is that there's a chemical reaction with the sap that actually can cause inflammation and pain and swelling at the site where your skin has touched the sap and then been exposed to sunlight, particularly UV rays. This is why this plant is kind of considered poisonous, but it, it really isn't. Figs are like your best friend. They're still my favorite pruning bush. I have an absolute bias. And I am not a tree. No, we want to zoom out. Mm. Now, for humor purposes, I am going to drag this camera over to a unique specimen real quick. This wasn't part of the video, but I'm going to do it anyway because I told you about it and I would feel really remiss if I didn't talk about this. Hey, kids, that rides. <laughs> Garden wrap. Here we go. All right. This bush. those leaves, kid. Look at those leaves. Just wake your parents up and tell them you want figs. This is an Afghan fig. Ficus Af Afghanistanica. I almost screwed that up, folks. You almost heard a blooper. Now, this is supposedly a more cold-hardy fig. Its figs supposedly aren't as sweet as common figs. But it produces, it tolerates cold better since it grew, it's from Afghanistan. It tolerates different temperatures better. And of course, look at those leaves. Look at those lovely leaves. They're, uh, they're all serrated and crazy. And this is obviously a fig. This fig works hard for money, so you better treat it right. Now the variety is called Silver Lyre, and the, like the, the string instrument, not liar like certain political candidates. <coughs> now, um, I've had these before and they did not succeed and now I'm trying again. I got this through a company called One Green World and that is not an advertisement. I'm just telling you where to look. Y'all might want one too. I, it's its first year, it's been in a pot, and I've been working on where to put it. I finally cleared space. It's actually going to go next to the Magnolia Fig. Now, this leaves us with one thing, and I'm going to drag this lovely camera out to show you some of the orchard while I'm here. That's the gate. Okay. I'm going to... I'm going to... Okay. As you can see... Glass bags to keep the birds off. Bucket-based irrigation system. Oh, over here we have Chicago Hardy. Look at that. See, that's all on new growth. And you can see where I did the pruning last year. I wanted to clear area around the kitchen window. Oh, oh, look at, oh no. The bird got that one. Oh, you, you avian B word. Yeah, I'm not cussing on this video. I'll still clean and harvest that because it can still be used. Now this is my prize. This is white as she and you can see I pruned it here. And then this is all new growth this year. And there's figs on the tip. There's figs up near the tip. Now what's interesting, and I do need to talk about this first. White as she does not mature to any color. It stays a golden yellow green, even when mature. So they look like this unripe. Uh, yeah, yeah, and then they kind of look like that when they're ripe. It means that I have to be more persistent about picking, otherwise the birds will get them, because the birds know when they're ripe. However, my customers go, I don't know, it's green, I, I think it might be unripe. Nah, you have to palpitate the figs, you have to feel them for softness. Figs are usually at the beginning of their ripeness, when they are the consistency of a ripe banana that hasn't started to go soft yet. I call that firm ripeness. That's probably an industry term, but this is the term I came up with anyway. Now they can go to soft ripe, which I don't have any... well actually the one that the birds pecked is a good example. By that point they're soft ripe. And then they can go to final ripeness where they, the skin starts to crack, they're leaking honeydew out of that eye on the bottom you see there, that little hole. And that's when the ants tend to move in, and the bir if the birds haven't gotten it, the ants will. Um, 
For propagation of cuttings, you can usually take something about that size. See that cutting up there, that stem in the middle? You can take that, and I would recommend using liquid rooting hormone like dip and grow, and put it in the humidity chamber, remove 50% of the leaves, and maintain humidity. It may take up to two or three months for that to root. You can expect, on average, something like a 50% loss rate due to rot, just simple failure of vigor and other factors. Most books like Dirt Woody Manual will say that um, you can only pick the cuttings in October or some other time. I've done them year round and with dip and grow it seems to fix the problem. I have grown them in sterilized soil, I have grown them in sand, I've tried a bunch of things. Try what works best for you for propagation. As a final note on figs, and I'm going to just rotate, you get to see some of the garden that you don't really see. This one here, this big bush here, that's a Celeste. This is a brown turkey. You can see I got glass bags on there to keep the birds off. I have to check those. Um, figs ripen at their leisure. They ripen whenever the hell they're ready and there's no way to really predict them any more than 24 hours out. So if you're going to do a fig orchard, I recommend you have a lot of muslin bags. Um, at least three inch diameter opening on them, preferably more. Figs can hyperswell during a rainy period, even if it lasts a day, and they can get stuck in the bags if they're under three inches. I have a few extra large ones, and I have a few three and a halves, and I've had to cut bags off ultra swollen figs where they've gotten so big that they've ripped their skin and they look like they're ready to explode. That said, I absolutely, bias warning, I like figs, um, recommend you grow figs in your garden. They're easy and they're the first recorded parthenocarpic fruit that humanity ever cultivated. I think that's very important. They spread from the Fertile Crescent in the Middle East worldwide because of us. A plant that adaptable should not be shunned, and you should grow it. There are other varieties and types out there that produce edible figs, and you should explore that. Um, in Carolina, as I said before, it is the great unexplored fruit crop. I have an orchard with almost a dozen, well, most of a dozen specimens, and I'm proud to say that I'm very happy with the results. So, that's all we have for this video. I hope you liked it. I know it's long, and I totally geeked out at a few spots, but um, I hope I helped you consider growing something interesting and delicious for you. I'm going to leave you with one last thought. Refrigerated fresh figs will last for up to two weeks in the refrigerator if you put them in a Tupperware container and keep them fairly dry. They'll freeze indefinitely. They make great jams. So the door is wide. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. What is that? That's a brown turkey sneak ripening. Told you they do it randomly. It was not like that yesterday. Hmm. Okay, <laughs> before I geek out any more, folks, I just want to say, grow figs, and stay tuned for the next episode. As always, folks, keep them growing. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe. Hit up the blog. Friends will let friends not grow figs.